Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it's the end of the day, the end of Sunday, into Monday. You know, if you do what we're supposed to do and you just worry about getting to 12 midnight, that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else but making it to 12 midnight. No matter what happened during the day, your goal is to make it to 12 midnight. No bad, uh, excuse me, no matter how bad your day was, no matter what somebody said, what somebody did, what you're going through, all you have to do is make it to 12 midnight. Why? Why? Why 12 midnight? Because if you focus on today, tomorrow never gets here. So all you have to do is worry about every 24 hours. Don't worry about tomorrow. If you focus on today, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Now, if you don't think that that makes any sense, just when 12 midnight comes, just say, I made it through the last 24 hours. And then when 12 midnight comes again, I made it through the last 24 hours. When you're 120 years old, then you can say, that was easy. Not kidding, telling the truth. Most people stress because they worry about tomorrow. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Focus on 24 hours. Just the 24 hour period, that's all you're looking for. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow never gets here if you focus on 24 hours at a time. That's where the phrase one day at a time comes. Look, somebody said each day brings forth its own badness. So don't worry about tomorrow, just the 24 hours, and you'll see things will start to improve, and your days won't be as long, and your weeks won't be as long, your summers won't be as long, your winters won't be as long, because you won't be focusing on all of that future stuff that you have no control over. But you can control what goes on right here, right now, and so forth. There you go, that's a bit of, um, you can call it advice if you want but it's just how I've been taking care of things for years now tomorrow never gets here all right ladies and gentlemen there are a couple of things I want to talk about the first thing I want to talk about is a lawsuit concerning arbitration all of you should be listening to this the state of New Mexico no excuse me the state of Mississippi a very backwards prejudicial and ignorant state their district court federal district court what a bunch of ignorant, backwards, redneck judges. I'm telling you the truth, I ain't lying. Thinking that they control the world. Sorry, Mississippi burning wasn't just 50 years ago. Racism hasn't ended, people. All this woke stuff and people complaining that individuals are still complaining about racism. Those idiots, and if you're one of them, then no pardon. Those idiots who complain about individuals pointing out racism and discrimination, y'all need to step away. That's not your argument. That's not even your place to say anything. If someone brings up the fact that they're feeling discriminated, you should shut up because you don't know how it feels. You've never been there, so you should keep your mouth shut if you don't have the experience. Now, I'm not here to support no, all this little woke junk that everybody's talking about. I could care less about that junk. I don't, I'm not into no mainstream bandwagons, okay? That, that junk, Lord have mercy. So, back to the conversation. Those of you who have done arbitration, had arbitration, I was literally waiting for this one case. This is a case in Mississippi the organization known as Plaza Mortgage, there's a, his name is Lobo, this idiot, I think his name is Robert Lobo, he's an attorney, he's a moron. Robert Lobo thought that he would jump on the bandwagon since the courts were so much against us, he thought he'd jump on the bandwagon and file a lawsuit and get an easy win. Robert Lobo doesn't understand it, I was waiting for his stupid, <clears throat> excuse me, anus. You see, Robert Lobo came in and he brought his complaint and he brought Rico saying that 
the sitcom arbitration association was a rico racketeering and that they had lied to their clients and customers and that they were defrauding them and really we're charging less than every other arbitration association out there and you're saying we're defrauding someone we're conducting actual arbitration hearings and we have documented proof we're sending out the documents and you're saying we're defrauding someone so, okay so we countersue well see those of you who don't understand arbitration, like I said, I went on vacation to study this. That's why I allowed that, so that I could study arbitration. If you don't believe me, I have somebody who was sending me nothing but cases on arbitration, nothing but studies and research papers and law reviews on arbitration. My job was to become an expert at arbitration. Did you know that a motion to vacate when they ask to vacate the arbitration award, has to be done within 90 days. They cannot go beyond 90 days. You have to understand that doesn't include the day for mailing, sending out the documents. So give it 10 days and do 100 days. California has, for the state, 100 days because they've calculated the 10 days. Now, with that being the case, if they don't sit up there and contest it within 90 days, they cannot ever contest it. They are forever barred from contesting the arbitration award. But people don't know that because they don't read it. And let the courts say whatever they want. And the courts don't get to say whatever they want because the court has no control over the Arbitration Act. The Supreme Court said that in Archer versus Henry and White. Okay? I mean, excuse me. <laughs> Henry Schein versus Archer and White Sales. So it's the Archer case. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court said that the courts must follow the act as written. That they don't get to rewrite the act to fit their sense of morality or whatever else they got going on. Basically, they have no jurisdiction to rewrite or redictate or restate what the Arbitration Act is. They have to follow it as written. So one thing that we're utilizing with the Federal Arbitration Act is a motion to vacate cannot be a motion to vacate plus a RICO charge, plus a racketeering, well, excuse me, racketeering is RICO, plus a uh, motion for sanctions. And what is, they did a motion for sanctions, RICO, there was something else. Oh, and an injunction. A, a motion to vacate an arbitration award is just that. A motion to vacate an arbitration award. You don't get to add anything else to it because the Arbitration Act doesn't allow you to add anything else to it. There is no such thing as RICO in the Arbitration Act. The courts want to interpret this and interpret that. We don't have time for interpretation. The Act says what it says. It's not left up to interpretation. And that's been the problem with the courts from the very beginning. They have claimed that they're the only ones who get to interpret that's okay. They also said that a layperson cannot represent a corporation, and a corporation must be represented by an attorney. There is no law on any book that says a corporation must be represented by an attorney. Yeah, there, there are codes and regulations and rules, but rules are not law. Codes are not law. Regulations are not law. The Constitution defines what a law is. It simply says, Congress shall make no law. Congress doesn't get to make laws, people. The people of the nation get to make laws. We're not even going to go into that conversation. It's too long of a conversation to help you guys understand that the system isn't working the way it was designed originally. But anyway, we can still use the system to take care of some things, like we're doing with the arbitration. Because they added all these things and the cases are already there showing from the Supreme Court and others that they are not permitted to add all of that junk into an arbitration a vacator request. It's a motion to vacate and they can only do a motion to vacate according to the dictates of the Federal Arbitration Act. So we automatically win. We've already paid the fees. See, we did two things. We did a counter complaint or a counter, comp a counter claim because they added those other things, so that makes their complaint a civil complaint. But when we did our counter complaint, I made sure to add in all of the things that are necessary in a response, including a demand for a jury trial. Now, you can't ask for a jury trial and a motion to vacate. But because they added all of those other parameters, that's a civil filing. So now we can claim, as we are, that it was confusing. We didn't know what they were doing and we asked the court to explain if this is a civil filing or is it arbitration, which is a summary disposition. And so we asked that of the court. The court never responded. The court said, hey, you're challenging jurisdiction? Well, fine, I'm gonna give an answer to that. 
and he sent it to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals came back with no response, saying this is not the proper procedure. We're sending this back to the court. And so they sent it back to the court, was not the proper procedure, and the court never ruled on it. We spent $505 on the filing fee. They held on to the money, ignored our counter complaint, said we were in default, defaulted everybody, and just went headlong into settling the other case. Even decided that he was gonna have a bench trial because he was in control. I told my people, don't worry about it. And I just needed him to keep doing what he was doing. And so the judge made a ruling, ruled against the company for $1,300,000. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can't ask for a monetary award or monetary damages in a motion to vacate proceeding. It's not permitted. Motion to vacate is only gives you two options. Either you vacate the award, I'm sorry, you can vacate the award, modify the award, or dismiss it, which is vacator. What, but when you dismiss it, you dismiss the complaint. Okay, those are the those are the only options for the court. So when the court issued a monetary damage award, that's where the court violated the rights of the parties, because the court had no jurisdiction to do that. So we're going after the judge, and we're going after the entire court at Mississippi for conspiracy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the year of the suit. I'm going to tell all of you like it is. I don't have time. I'm not playing with these fools no more. Before I kept my mouth shut, before I allowed them to do what they did. Now, I'm gonna start flexing my muscles and showing them whether or not I know what I'm doing. So they're gonna to have to prove to me that I don't know what I'm talking about. They're gonna to have to prove to me that I don't know anything about law. I have too many other people, lawyers and judges who are saying something completely different, especially in that SEC case, because I am literally demonstrating what I'm capable of in that particular matter. In this particular matter, this is before the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. This is involving arbitration. We're not bringing it up on behalf of everybody. We're going to take care of that in a second. The next thing I'm working on is a class action against the banks, all of them, for all of our clients. That will be within the next week and a half. That's all I'm working on. That's what I got to put in. So we're working on that now because I have some people. It's Right about time, we've done all the paperwork that we're supposed to do. I just have one more document to send out this week. But while that document is going out, the lawsuit is already written up. I just have to do some editing. And we'll get that in the mail by next week. And this is an actual lawsuit. This is not no anything else other than a lawsuit. It's They want to play, it's time we play. All right? So I just wanted to explain that to all of you let you know that the case that's before the Court of Appeals, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, that right there is going to be classic because it's, we're putting the court in several positions. Now the court hates to be boxed in, so we're giving it several reasons not to play, not to fight us. We're going to eventually get a ruling in favor of us. Now, a couple of things, they're going to have to rule contrary to us. Why? Because of this public policy thing. But I do get to bring up the issue as to whether or not a corporation, which is a group of people, have the right under NCAA or the Trainmen Association and so on and so forth to have one of their members represented. You see... If the Supreme Court has ruled that a member of a group can assist other members of the same group accomplish their legal means or legal objectives, then so can a corporation because it's a group of people and they can use whomever they choose. See, the Supreme Court said in Hobby Lobby and in Swift Voters versus Bush that corporations are people too. So if corporations are people, then that means that they have constitutional rights, according to the Supreme Court. And since corporations have constitutional rights, which was not what the Constitution said, the Constitution never said corporations were people. Go back and read the Constitution. It never said anything about no stupid corporation. Shh, don't tell nobody. Supreme Court said corporations are people too. So if corporations are people too, that means corporations have the same fundamental due process rights as a person, a natural person. 
Well, if corporations have the rights of a natural person, that means they have the right to counsel of choice. No, no, no. Uh, uh. If a person doesn't have to get permission to get counsel, then a corporation doesn't have to get permission to get counsel. But here's the thing that hammers it right in the middle of their head, that big, huge nail that they can't get away from, they can't escape it, and they can't avoid it. The court is the one who brought this up. So it makes it a matter before the court now because that's what we are appealing on is whether or not a person can represent a corporation. Why? Well, quite simply put this way so that everybody understands it. When a corporation is before the court, it has the right to counsel of choice. That's the law. Equal protection of law affords them the right to counsel of choice. The court says they must have an attorney and they must be authorized to practice law in the state. Well, let me do it to you like this. The Supreme Court has said in Schwer, in Garner, and in Sims that no state may license the practice of law as the practice of law is not a matter of the state's grace. In other words, you don't have to ask permission of the state. The state doesn't have the authority to grant permission is what it says when it says it's not a matter of the state's grace. You don't have to petition the state for permission to practice law. Why? Because if a person has the right to counsel of choice, and if a person is required to know the law, that means they have the right to make that a practice. They can do it as a private practice. Why? Because the law says that any person may take up any vocation to earn a living. Go ahead and look at all the cases where the Supreme Court has said that a person has the right to choose whatever vocation they want. Now, no, 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 hold on. No one has the right to practice medicine. Okay, please understand that. There is no constitutional right to practice medicine. But because it is held that ignorance of the law is no excuse, that means everyone has the right to practice law because everyone is considered or deemed to be an expert at law. Shh, don't tell nobody that because they will try to argue with you on that, but they can't. See, they're an expert at policies and procedures and ordinances and rules and codes, and, but that's not the law. None of that junk is law. You are only required to be an expert at law. Now, you do know that there is only one law. Do to others as you want them doing to you. That's the only law that exists. If you don't believe me, go and look at all of the laws written by these idiots. Oh, I'm sorry, those are not laws. Those are codes, are they? So go look at the so-called Ten Commandments. I mean, the Ten Amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Yeah, you heard me, commandments. That's what they were copying, ladies and gentlemen. So, the First Amendment gives a person the right to speak. Gives them the right to practice religion. Okay, that's... Pay attention to what we just said. That's treating your neighbor as you want to be treated. Go back and look at the First Amendment. That's treating your neighbor as you want to be treated. And when you're treated wrongly, you have the right to go petition and say, Hey, they ain't following the golden rule. Go back and look at the First Amendment and see if that's not what it says. The right to peacefully... A symbol? Treating your neighbor as you want to be treated. Not having the army quarter in your home? Treating your neighbor as you want to be treated. The right to bear arms for protection, not to assault someone. Okay, doing unto others as you want to be done to you. Be securing your property, possessions, and no warrant shall issue unless probable cause exists. Okay, treating others as you want to be treated. Go and look at every single one of the Ten Commandments, and that is the so-called... Oh, did I say commandments again? That is the so-called golden rule. That is the only law. Now, you don't believe me. Go back and look at what Jesus said in the book of Matthews, the 23rd chapter. Go back and look at what he says about this love thing about loving your neighbor as yourself how there is no other greater commandment than that we got Matthews the 10th chapter also speaking about technically the whole Bible that's what it talks about is loving your neighbor from beginning to end 
you don't believe me, go ahead and take a look and see if you cannot read that into every single scripture in the Bible. The whole book is called a book of love. Everybody keeps thinking that it's something other than what it is. Basic instructions before leaving the earth. Whatever. So, back to the hotel. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the sap packs in a minute, but I want to get back to that lawsuit. When dealing with the courts, you must bring up issues, but you can't just bring up any issue. Just bringing up an issue doesn't mean the court has to hear it. I had to raise the issues in a state court, but they have to be issues that have not been decided by the courts. See, whether or not an individual has the right to practice law has been addressed by the courts on several occasions, but whether or not the right to practice law is a common right or not, now that has never been answered by the court. Well, if everybody's required to know the law, then it is a common right. Everybody has the right to practice the law, and if everybody has the right to practice law, everybody has the right to make whatever training part of their vocation. That's what people have the right to do. That's what they're going to convince you you don't have the right to do, and so that's why we have to bring it up as an issue. We have to make it an issue. So we're doing that. We're bringing up the Arbitration Act and all the things you can't bring in a motion to vacate. That will get the whole case overturned and that judgment that was rendered overturned. They will have to deal with the fact that we filed the complaint and paid the filing fee. Oh, by the way, we're also bringing up another thing. We're challenging the filing fee in both arenas, in the district court and in the circuit court of appeals. Why are we challenging the filing fee? Well, the court receives an annual budget. We can prove that. Their annual budget is a part of the public record, so we introduce that by reference. We'll have to produce the document. We just do it by reference because it's a public document. They cannot be a private corporation, so all of their documents are public. So all we have to do is by reference. We do their tax paperwork the same way. There's no justification for two filing fees. And since the filing fee is in order to access the court, it can only be construed as a penalty because accessing the court could never be a privilege. Then we bring up the thing about the um, the Trading with the Enemy Act. Now, we don't bring all these points at the same time. No, we bring these points up in such a way that it is unique because we're not going to bring all these things up in our appeal because then they will try to shoot down some of it talking about it was blah, 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 blah. So we bring it up in a unique way. And we introduce the information in a unique way, even though it was all brought up in the actual lawsuit the counterclaim. Everything that was in the counterclaim, we get to bring up on appeal. I decided not to bring in everything we brought up in the counterclaim. Now remember, when we did the counterclaim, I knew the court was going to ignore it. That was the fifth counterclaim they ignored. But I needed a pattern so I can show that there was a conspiracy. So that was the third judge who did it. And so now I get to go after the judges for acting in complete and total absence of all jurisdiction. All right, so that's your heads up. Been working on those two complaints for the last three weeks, the one for the SEC and this one. And going in between the two and making sure things were what they were. Now I get to focus on the class action suit dealing with mortgages. We will invite some of you to join that suit, but for right now, we're getting ready to bring in all of our clients and add all their information at this time. And all of the banks and financial institutions, we're going to add in that information. So stay tuned. We'll let you know. We'll keep you updated. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. This is just going to be the video talking about the update dealing with the suit concerning arbitration. Then the next video will be the update for the SAT packs, letting people know about the tax credits and what should have been done with the tax credits. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Even though I'm tired, I'm going to take the time to do that tonight. One second, y'all.